really matters? That might be the most important question you can ask. So let's talk about it. Welcome to What Really Matters podcast, Everyday Spirituality with Karen Wyatt. Hey, thanks for joining me here again for another episode. Today, I'm going to share kind of an informational podcast on 10 daily reminders for living more consciously. And this comes from my book, The Journey from Ego to Soul, which really focuses on how we can grow spiritually and grow to a higher level of consciousness so that our lives can be more guided by our higher selves, our higher consciousness, our souls, than driven by our egos. So the whole idea of the book and the practices it includes is to become aware of our egos, our shadow issues, and to find ways to rise above that, to rise above lower consciousness and our lower selves, to be able to hear and listen to our higher consciousness selves and our higher intuition and be guided by the best parts of ourselves instead of limited by our lower selves. So one of the resources that I offer when you get the book, The Journey from Ego to Soul, is this list of 10 daily reminders. And um, I'll start by saying 10 is a lot. 10 is too many things to actually remember for one day. But this is a list of 10 helpful practices you can use Uh, from day to day, and without the expectation that you should use all 10 of them, I recommend that you look through this list and find some that appeal to you that you think might be helpful or might work well for you. And you can also alternate them. You can shift them at any time. You can quit doing one and take up another one. Uh, It's just a list of things to help you get into your higher self and become more aware of your higher consciousness and also to be more guided by that consciousness from day to day. So I'm going to go through these 10 things here in this episode. And there is a handout that I will attach to the show notes. And hopefully you'll be able to download it there. But uh, we'll just start going through them and talk through them a little bit. 10 daily reminders for living more consciously. So the first reminder is to set some sort of an intention for the day each morning when you wake up. And this can be the simplest thing. Maybe it is today I want to enjoy being outside for a few moments. Maybe it is today I'm going to have a healthy lunch or today I will call my friend and ask how she's doing. Today I'll finish a project. It could be anything, but it's simply looking ahead to your day and thinking of one positive thing that you would like to do in the day that will bring you joy that will add more love to your life and to the world, and that gives you something to look forward to, something positive, something good for the day. So you're actually starting the day with goodness. And sometimes we wake up in the morning with dread, and we are not looking forward to the day ahead of us. We don't want to go to work. We don't want to have to do some of the tasks on our to-do list. But if instead of focusing on the the things we're dreading, we can look ahead and find one positive thing, something good that we can feel excited about that can help us raise our energy a little bit first thing in the morning. And all it requires is to just say this simple statement, today I commit myself to, and so then you add the little phrase of whatever it is, today I commit myself to, Uh, go for a walk after lunch for five minutes. Maybe that's it. Whatever, whatever it is that you would like to do that you can set an intention for and look forward to during the day. For most of my life, I haven't really been into this idea of setting intentions, but I do understand the value of starting the day 
in a positive frame of mind. I think that's really important. So simply finding one little thing that you can look forward to might change the entire day. The second tip for the day is to work on your mindset. And here's something that I recommend that works really well for me is to remember every day that life is about learning. And so one thing that the way I look at it is I'm doing a self-study course in spirituality. I'm actually here on this planet going through my life day to day learning and studying how to become my whole self, how to embrace my shadow self, how to forgive myself for my past, how to grow in any way I possibly can. This is a self-study course. I'm working on it. It's kind of a graduate level course, so it can be very challenging at times, but it helps me view everything that happens during the day as an opportunity to learn something. And again, this goes back to that positive mindset somewhat and starting the day instead of feeling dread, starting the day maybe with some curiosity about what's going to come my way today and how will I learn something from it? What can I make out of what happens today? And it might be that a lot of challenging and difficult things happen. You get a flat tire, you get a bill you weren't expecting, someone gets angry at you, your phone dies and you can't recharge it and you have to get a new phone, something. It it could be one of those days when multiple negative things happen. If you have this mindset that life is really a classroom and you're here to learn things each time one of these challenging situations arises, you can, yes, feel whatever emotion comes up, frustration, anger, annoyance, disappointment, sadness, whatever emotion is there, feel it, but try to look beyond it and think, hmm, how interesting that this is happening today. I'm feeling all of these feelings I wonder what I can make of this. I wonder what I can do with this. I wonder if there's something here that I could learn. And maybe what you learn, I, you know, it might be that you learn to remind yourself to fill the car up with gas the night before so that you don't run out on your way to work in the morning. Maybe you learn a really simple little lesson. Or maybe you learn something bigger Maybe you learn to tamper down your expectations. If you were expecting something huge or big and joyous and wonderful to happen during the day and you got a major disappointment instead, maybe you learn to just be a little more chill, to just be a little more neutral sometimes about things and not set your up, set yourself up for disappointment but to be prepared and be a little ready. Things may not go as well as I would like them to. These are, these are just some examples that are popping into my head of things that you might learn. Some days I've learned things uh, like not to expect too much out of myself. Some days I've had to learn that I've put too many burdens on myself to try to carry and to try to fix in one day and that I need to allow more time for self-care. I've learned some days that I have to actually say no and I have to drop all of my plans and do nothing because some days that's the best thing and that's the thing I need more than anything else. So Whatever the lesson is that you might learn or or whatever you might take away from a day, it might simply be that you learn that you love lemon sherbet ice cream. You've never tried it before, but you try it one day and find out that you love it. Maybe that's what you learn. It can be the smallest, simplest little thing. But having the attitude and the mindset that Life is a classroom and there will always be some new opportunity every day, really in every moment for you to learn something new and to find something new and different in that day. Having that mindset really helps you feel more in balance 
and helps you look at the challenges of the day with a little bit more open-mindedness and open-heartedness and helps you also act with more resilience because you're looking to your strengths to find ways to cope with whatever's happening. And you're looking for opportunities to learn something, to grow stronger, to develop better skills. So that's the second reminder to have a mindset that each day is an opportunity to learn something new in this classroom of life. The third daily reminder is to support your journey with healthy habits. And this is obvious. We all know this, that we should be as healthy as we can be. Um, Eating food for fuel and nourishment, viewing food not so much as a coping mechanism, but as nourishment that keeps our bodies going and helps us have the energy we need to get through the day and participating in exercise to help us have strength and endurance so that we can also get through our challenges during the day. So healthy food, healthy exercise, those are part of getting yourself to higher consciousness. And it's a little bit of a catch 22 because when we do begin to act more from our higher consciousness, when we are more conscious about our day, we usually find that it's easier to eat healthier food and it's easier to get healthy exercise. Higher consciousness helps us feel motivated to pursue those healthy habits but the healthy habits also help lead us toward higher consciousness. So it's like this vicious cycle. And which one comes first? It's hard to say. But in the beginning, as far as as healthy habits, you may need to fake it until you make it, as they say. And you may need to actually make lists and set your intentions around eating healthy food, getting some exercise. You may need to focus your energy on that quite a bit until it becomes a habit for you and until you find yourself just naturally choosing healthier foods and just naturally stepping out the door to go for a walk to get some exercise because your whole being longs for that and pushes you in that direction. And when you do open up to higher consciousness, it does become much easier to have healthier habits. But in the beginning, you may have to work at that and you may have to put time and energy into building up those habits. So that's tip number three, work towards food for fuel and nourishment and exercise for strength and endurance. And tip number four is to focus on small changes in the moment, one step at a time. So this comes after the last tip, when you are trying to build healthy habits, remember that change happens sometimes gradually, incrementally, and it can be slow, especially in the beginning. So keep your expectations realistic and Don't try to run a marathon the first month that you begin to exercise. Allow yourself to just very slowly ease into it and ease into this habit of getting more exercise without overdoing it so that you don't overstress and get injured. And same with eating healthy food. Allow yourself plenty of grace and self-forgiveness Just focus on tiny changes a little bit at a time and go about it slowly, one day at a time, one step at a time. Reminder number five is to practice deep breathing during the day to stay focused and in the present moment. And deep breathing, I talk about this a lot, but it's one of the best tools you can cultivate and it's so easy And you don't need anything. You don't need any equipment. You don't need any special training. You just need to remember every now and then to take a deep breath. And it's most effective if you exhale longer than you inhale. So I like to think of just counting as you inhale and exhale and 
inhale and count to five as you breathe in and then focus on breathing out for a count of seven so that the exhalation is longer than the inhalation because that little prolongation of the of the exhale is what triggers the relaxation response it triggers the parasympathetic nervous system to take effect which helps you relax and it can actually slow down your heart rate and your breathing and help you feel calmer and literally it works within one or two breaths that's all you need is to just pause for a few seconds take a couple of deep breaths in and out with longer exhale and you can find yourself settling down into this state of greater calm and relaxation It's really helpful. Anytime you feel yourself starting to lose it, you feel anxious or angry, you feel emotions arising in you that are threatening to take over and cause cause you to have an outburst or to, to yell at someone or to get distressed and maybe behave in a way that won't be helpful in the moment. If you can stop for just a second and remind yourself, take a deep breath right now, in, out, it can pull you right out of that state. It can help you feel in control of your emotions again. And the idea is not to get rid of the emotions or to repress them or ignore them. We want to be able to face the emotions and see them for what they are and also honor them. We just don't want the emotions to take over our behavior. And so Being in higher consciousness means that we're able to manage all the negative feelings that come with come up within us. We're able to manage the ego and the thoughts that it creates in our minds. And we're able to make conscious choices about how we want to behave in the world. So again, deep breathing is one of your most important tools that can help you in the moment, completely shift everything. And one of the ways to start ingraining deep breathing as a practice is just to do it intentionally. And sometimes it's great when you first wake up in the morning, if you take a couple of deep breaths, and before you go to bed at night, take a few deep breaths that can be helpful, because you're really training yourself in various situations to practice deep breathing. And again, you may be so become so accustomed to deep breathing as a tool that you will automatically use it when you're in a tense situation. You might find yourself breathing in and counting and breathing out and counting automatically without thinking about it or without deciding that that's what you need to do now. Eventually, you can just train yourself to have that reaction when a stressful situation occurs. But it takes work a little bit at a time and valuing it and choosing it as a practice that you would like to do. So maybe the intention you set in the morning is today, I want to work on deep breathing during the day a few times during the day. That That's one way that you could help yourself practice it and begin to introduce it into your daily life. But just remember the value of deep breathing. I'm not overstating this at all. It can be one of the most helpful tools in any situation. So give it a try and see what you think. So that's tip number five. And number six is to spend five to 15 minutes in stillness each day. This can be challenging because most of us are not used to actually sitting still and being quiet. And now that we all carry cell phones with us, almost any time when we are in a quiet place or we are sitting and waiting for something, we're busy looking at our phones and reading things and watching little videos. We're stimulating our minds and our brains through our phones in those rare moments when we actually do have a few minutes to sit and be still. So I'm encouraging you to begin the practice of at first just for five minutes, maybe set a little timer 
turn your phone off, turn off any other devices, and just sit in one place. If you can, look out a window or sit outdoors if you can. Just be still and quiet. Allow your thoughts to arise, whatever they are, and get in the habit of being still and not being constantly entertained or stimulated or provoked by by something from outside of you and allow yourself that tiny little space and time. And honestly, five minutes a day, it can be life changing, believe it or not. And I'm saying you might even want to expand later in time to 15 minutes a day, you may like it and enjoy it and decide that you want to spend more time. But if all you can ever do is five minutes of stillness in a day, that's enough to notice changes from it. And what you're actually doing is creating these little spaces in time where your higher consciousness can speak to you actually, where you can get input from your higher self. And that might sound crazy to you if you're not used to thinking in this way, but sometimes rising above all the fray that's in your mind, all these voices, all these emotions, all these repetitive cyclical thoughts that go through your mind that are not very helpful, sometimes there will be a message that comes through that is positive and that has guidance for you or simply a message that says, look how beautiful the clouds are right now. Feel that, feel that little breeze brushing across your face. Look at the rays of sun and the pattern they make on the floor. You, you might have just the tiniest little voice, but that urges you to notice something beautiful or to feel love or to feel joy. The tiniest little voice. And when we're constantly stimulated and looking at things and listening to things, we can't hear that voice. That's why we need to create these little spaces so this voice of our higher self can come through to us and we can begin to strengthen that voice. The more we listen to this this higher self and the intuition that comes through, the more the more credence we give to it, the more we validate in a way by, by having moments of stillness and listening, then the more we strengthen it and the more we're likely to have these positive messages come through to us from our higher consciousness that might point out to us things to work on or things to notice about ourselves. And sometimes what comes through is self-love really, is a sense of all is well, and you are loved. You're amazing. You're beautiful. So these are crucial minutes. If you can spend them five minutes a day of just quiet, still time. And I assure you, it will make a difference if you're able to do it. And again, this might be something you have to set an intention to, and maybe you can only do it one day a week in the beginning. But again, small little changes make all the difference. So next, number seven is to work on shadow issues that come up during the day by writing in your journal. So this is going to take some time and you may not be ready for this yet, but you may notice that certain emotions or feelings or thoughts rise to the surface over and over again. The more you become conscious and the more you're paying attention to what's going through your mind, the more you might find that there are certain themes or issues that keep coming up. If that's happening there's a high likelihood that those are coming from your shadow. Those are issues like old wounds or something unhealed that you need to take some time to look at. It can be helpful if you keep a journal to just jot things down, maybe at the end of the day, if there was something like, 
you know, wow, I kept uh, having anger come up at this coworker of mine. And I'm not sure why, because she didn't do anything wrong, but I kept feeling anger, angry at her, something like that. Jot it down when you notice that something was there that seemed a little bit off, that didn't seem helpful or good, or that you didn't feel totally comfortable with write it down. And maybe in the beginning, you can't understand it or explain it, and you have no idea what to do about it. But the more you begin to notice these little patterns, the closer you'll get to understanding where they come from. And gradually over time, you might have more and more insight about why that happens. What is it about that person? What gets triggered in you when you're around that particular person? And and where does that come from? Is it from something in your past, something in your childhood that didn't get fully addressed or healed in the past? So writing about these things in your journal can be really helpful because, again, you're bringing them into the light. You're bringing them into consciousness and you're using your higher witnessing self to look at these issues and to look at them in a non-judgmental and really friendly way. You're not looking at the shadow in an attempt to judge yourself or blame or shame yourself. You're simply looking at it with curiosity, like, hmm, isn't that interesting that I feel this anger inside whenever, whenever I'm around that person? I wonder why it is. And so the more you look at it, the more you write about it, the more insight you will begin to have. And it can lead you in a direction of healing something that's been there. And who knows what it might be. It might be something you don't even know that you're carrying within you. So use your journal as a way to write about these shadow negative emotions and thoughts that arise within you each day. The end of the day is a good time to process that. So next, number eight, is to stay curious when things go wrong and try to take the galaxy view. And I already mentioned this idea of having the mindset that life is a classroom and being curious about what's happening. But I'll talk a little bit about the galaxy view. And I've mentioned this in other episodes before, whether you've heard them or not. Um, The galaxy view is trying to look at your life from the biggest perspective possible. And, and uh, I got this idea for the to call it the galaxy view when I read about astronauts talking about their experience of being in space and looking down at planet Earth for the first time from space and seeing this tiny blue ball in this big black expanse of the universe. And the perspective it gave them is, wow, my troubles and my problems are really tiny compared to the vastness of this universe. And I think that can be helpful for us sometimes when we start to feel overwhelmed in our day-to-day lives is just to remember if you were to zoom out, if you were to zoom out and be on a star out in the Milky Way and looking down at planet Earth, everything you're experiencing right now would seem small and tiny and minuscule and it's, it's okay sometimes for you to get yourself out of that overwhelm that you can feel with your own emotions. And remember that things are not as big and huge as they seem, though sometimes they actually are really big. I mean, there will be days when something tragic and terrible happens, and it will be huge and overwhelming. And that might not be be a day when you're able to take the galaxy view, but I'm talking more about the day-to-day issues like the flat tire, like getting a bill in the mail that you weren't expecting, like learning how to take the galaxy view when those things happen and to remember this isn't so big that it can defeat me. I can get through this. And so suggestion number nine is 
if you get thrown off balance emotionally, return to your core, your heart, and it's important to develop tools that can help you do that. So deep breathing is one thing we've already talked about, but the Heart Math Institute recommends this really simple little practice that combines deep breathing with simply putting one hand over your heart. And when you take your deep breath to envision that you're breathing in love and kindness and peace into your heart and filling your heart. Sometimes I do it by imagining that I'm breathing in light. If everything feels dark inside of me, I breathe light into my heart space underneath my hand until I feel like I'm glowing and I have plenty of light inside of me and I'm not overwhelmed by the darkness. So again, this simple tool, when something does throw you off balance and you're losing it and maybe you yell or you say something hurtful to someone or you slam a door or you tear something up, (laughs) maybe you've done something that you wish you hadn't done, stop for a second, put your hand on your heart, take a deep breath. Breathe in light, breathe in peace, breathe in calmness or kindness, whatever you feel will soothe you in that moment. And just use your breath to bring that positive feeling in to help you get back into a more positive balance. And then number 10, the last reminder is to end each day with a gratitude practice. So I love this combination of starting the day out with a positive intention for the day, then ending the day with gratitude. And it might be that there are occasional days when those two things line up when, wow, I'm grateful because I actually did what I set an intention for today. But that oftentimes may not happen. Your intention may not have worked out the way you wanted it to. And you may end up being grateful for entirely different things than you would have imagined in the morning when you woke up. It could be that your day was not what you had envisioned at all. Something completely different happened. But that's wonderful. And if you did have to endure something unexpected, something challenging or stressful, and somehow you got through it, and here you are at the end of the day, you're still here, you've kept yourself together, you made it through the day, that alone is something to be grateful for. So no matter how bad the day has been, There's almost always at least one thing you could find that you could feel gratitude for. And that's kind of your closing intention in a way at the very end of the day. And maybe it's just, I'm grateful that I got through that. I'm grateful for my bed that I get to lay down now and go to sleep. I'm grateful that it's night and this day is over. That might be what your gratitude is about on any given day. And that's fine. It's the idea of it is that you have started the day with something positive and now you're ending the day with something positive. And just that small amount of positivity entering in will begin to make big changes for you in your life from day to day. So if the only things you do are try to be a little bit of positivity in your life in the morning and a little bit of gratitude in your life at night, those two things alone can begin to help you grow and change. So again, I know I've listed 10 things, which is a lot, and there's no way you could remember all 10 or even do all 10 things, but I wanted to offer you lots of different possibilities so that you can pick from them. Maybe you just pick one thing and maybe you only do it once in the next week. That's fine. You have to start wherever you are with whatever you can. So I'm going to quickly relist these 10 things before I say goodbye, uh, just in case you were trying to write them down. The number one was to set an intention for the day each morning when you wake up. Number two, have a mindset that I am doing a self-study course in spirituality. Everything that happens is an opportunity to learn. Number three, support your journey with healthy habits, food for fuel and nourishment, 
exercise for strength and endurance. Number four, focus on small changes in the moment, one step at a time. Don't try to go too fast. Don't get discouraged when it seems like a slow, gradual process. Number five, practice deep breathing to stay focused and in the present moment throughout the day. Number six, spend five to 15 minutes in stillness each day. Number seven, work on any shadow issues that come up during the day by writing about it in your journal. Number eight, stay curious when things go wrong and try to take the galaxy view. Number nine, if you do get thrown off balance emotionally, return to your core, your heart, by using deep breathing and putting one hand on your heart. And number 10, end each day with a gratitude practice. So I hope these 10 daily reminders are helpful to you. These are all things that I use, not every day, but here and there, I pick and choose. They're all tools that I've learned how to use. So I use whichever of them fit the most in my day. And they've changed everything for me. So I hope you find them to be positive for you as well. So until we're together again next week, remember that we're here for love in this classroom of life. The main curriculum is to learn about love. So if nothing else, just focus on that. That could be your intention uh, for the day and your gratitude at the end of the day. Just love. Face your fear. Be ready for whatever curriculum life brings your way next. And love each and every moment of your very precious life. Bye-bye.